everyone. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about self-employment stuff while you watch me work on an oil painting in the background. In part one of the self-employment talk, I'll have that linked below. I talked about my journey on how I became self-employed because I wasn't really seeking to be. It kind of just all happened. And so if you want to hear about that, I'll have that video linked below. And today is going to be about the pros and cons of self-employment. And before I jump into that, I just want to say a few words about the painting. I know it's not like the best. Her face is still a little wonky, but I'm still really proud of it because I suck at doing realistic shading on a face. And this isn't meant to be like photorealism, but I was using reference for the facial features just for the shadows and stuff like that, because that's one of the things I want to improve on is different facial features and just shading on the face in general. I usually don't go this extreme with the shading or this realistic, but I wanted to challenge myself and make it almost like a study while making an original piece of art at the same time. And materials will be listed below. I'm using my water soluble or water mixable oil paints on a piece of wood. So yeah, info below. And now let's talk about the self-employment stuff. So I have my list here of pros and cons. <laughs> the list of pros is much smaller than the list of cons, but I feel like they're big pros that outweigh the cons for me. And everyone is different when it comes to self-employment because there are so many different fields you could be in. For me, I'm like an artist, a YouTuber, a Twitch streamer, that kind of thing. And even if you are into the self-employed self artist scene, it doesn't necessarily mean you're doing the same things I'm doing. So each person is gonna have their own pros and cons and what might be a pro for someone might be a con for someone else. So this is just based on my experience, what I found. So, all right, starting at the top. <laughs> this is the biggest pro in my opinion is that when you're self-employed, you're your own boss. And that can be daunting because that's one of my cons is no one is telling you what to do. So when you're, own, you're your own boss, there's a lot of responsibility there, but just the freedom, man, like the freedom of choosing what you're gonna do. And for me, I don't do freelance work usually or commissions. And so everything is what I wanna do. I'm working on personal projects. I'm making videos based on what I wanna make videos about, all that kind of things. Like when I'm streaming, I'm streaming what I wanna do. It's there's just that freedom to do what you want and you're increasing your bottom line, not someone else's. Cause I mean, it was still fun. Like I used to work at an animation studio and that was still fun cause animation is fun and you're working on these projects. You're like, yeah, I get to be a part of this thing. But after a while it gets a little draining and you want to start working on your own projects. And I see that a lot online, like big artists from like Disney and DreamWorks, they quit eventually and end up doing their own thing just because they're following their passions. And so, to me, that's the big thing is being your own boss, choosing what you want to do. But if you're the kind of person who likes being told what to do, you need that direction given to you, then that could be a con because there's no one telling you what to do. The next pro, you make your own schedule. Yes, you don't want to work at like eight in the morning. You don't have to work at eight in the morning. Like me personally, I set an alarm for 8.30 every day. I usually don't even get out of bed until nine. And like, that's totally fine because I'm still putting in my hours. It's up to me when I want to wake up. Like I prefer to work a little bit later and stay up late and then sleep in a little bit. So that's how I do it. And it's up to you how you want to do it. I've tried moving to an earlier schedule. Like for a while I would try to wake up at seven and I'm like, okay, I'm going to get in my workout and shower before I even start working for the day. But that just, <laughs> that didn't last very long. I prefer to edit my vlog pretty much first thing after I get out of bed. Like I'll do a few things like to wake up, I'll feed the cats, yada, yada. But then I go down to the computer in my pajamas and start editing for the day. And then I get in my workout and shower after. So it's, it's a little weird, but I just, I don't know, I guess that works for me. Sometimes I'm like, I need a more normal schedule. And I'm like, well, no, you don't really need it. It's like, if that's what works for me, then that's what works for me. Now the downside of having your own schedule is that schedules can be hard to stick to because there's no one telling you to like be here at a certain time and do your thing. And so for me, what I find works best is, you know, I have a rough schedule, but it's not like, okay, at three o'clock, I have to be doing this thing. Like it, it's kind of a fluid schedule. Certain things can be moved around even from day to day. I have certain things that I have to stick to. Like, you know, I have sort of a live stream schedule and I have to work everything around that. And I, I have to upload a video on Friday. So I'm working around that. But there's some days where I can swip, switch things around. It's like, okay, on Wednesday, I was going to do this. and Thursday, I was going to do this. Let's reverse those. Like I have the freedom to do that. But yeah, if you're someone who is, you can't really stay on task very easily and you're prone to being distracted, 
then that can be really, really hard. The next pro is that your income ceiling is removed. So when you work at a job, you know, you usually have your starter salary or hourly rate, whatever it is you have, and you can work your way up from there. But usually there's some cap at some point. It depends what field you're in and where you work. But, you know, usually there's sort of the average income that someone in your position makes and that's what you get. But when you're self-employed, that income ceiling is removed and you could potentially make way above that. Like for me personally, I'm making a lot more money now than I was at my full-time job. It's crazy. Um, but the downside to that is that the income floor is also removed. And when you're self-employed, income can fluctuate a lot and it's unpredictable, man. You, you could end up making below minimum wage if you're not careful. I think if you have a good business strategy set up, then you'll be fine, especially if you make sure you're doing really well before you quit. Like I made sure that even on my lowest months, I was making enough money to cover everything, plus have a bit of a cushion on top of that in case something came up. So I was pretty responsible about it. So, you know, don't just randomly quit your job to go be self-employed. Make sure you can do it because income is so, it's so unpredictable and you can make a lot, a lot of money, but you might on the flip side make like nearly nothing. And so that's one of the cons. All right. One of the other pros is you can work from home. <laughs> that's pretty nice because you don't have to commute to work. If you want to make something for lunch, you could just go into your fridge, whip something up. For me, I like having my cats around. So having them by me when I work is really nice. They're actually both right on the floor right here. They like to follow me around. <laughs> but working from home isn't for everybody. Some people prefer to get out of the house and go to a studio. Even if they're self-employed, they might rent a studio elsewhere and work there. For me, I don't really wanna spend the money to have a separate space. It would be nice to separate work and home more, but I don't know, like I said, I like being around my cats. I like just being home. I, if packages get delivered, I'm here. Um, in the future, if I start having kids, I can look after my kids while I'm working. And so to me, I just, I like that, but that can also be a con for someone if they wanna be completely separated from their work. The downside of working from home is all the distractions. And so, like I said, <laughs> you wanna cook something, you might end up cooking something elaborate that uses up too much of your time. And you're like, why did I just spend so much time cooking that meal? I should have made something quick and had a quick lunch break. Or just something comes up and you get distracted. Like sometimes a certain package gets delivered and then I'm so obsessed with what's in the package that I, end up taking this huge break. Just little things like that come up, especially if you have kids. <laughs> like I don't yet, I'm like, I kind of fear the day. I'm like, I really want kids, but how will it affect my work schedule? It's gonna ruin everything. <laughs> because you know, that's a big responsibility. It's hard to, to work and watch the kids at the same time, I'm assuming. Just, just little things like that. You know, there are a lot of distractions around, especially for someone who's just like, you know, sometimes I just go to check Twitter. Like I go to tweet something, because that's part of the job. And then I see all these other tweets and I'm like, hmm, let me just scroll through Twitter. Like there are distractions everywhere when you work from home. So that's one of the cons. Another plus side of being self-employed is for me, like this is very much for me, it's less stressful than working somewhere else. I, again, I think it just comes down to the whole being your own boss thing and you get to choose what you wanna do. You get to choose when you take a break. Like I think just that freedom makes me less stressed. For some people, it might be an added stress, especially if you're struggling to be self-employed, like you're struggling to make ends meet, I can see it being very stressful. And I do get stressed sometimes too. Like sometimes I have huge crunch times, especially if I wanna go out of town, I have to make all these videos in advance, I'll touch on that in a sec. But there are times when I get super stressed too, or I have a deadline, like when I was working on my book, when I would get close to a deadline, it, it was just stress mode. So, you know, I still have my share of stress but I feel like overall I'm less stressed and more happy, you know, I don't know, Meh. Just, just for me anyway. Another pro is that it's easy to schedule appointments and certain errands because you can work that into your schedule anywhere you want. It depends how strict you are on your schedule. Like for me, I don't mind moving things around. If it's like easiest for me to get a doctor appointment in the morning, I'll go do that. Or like this blood donation clinic, they have morning and early afternoon hours during the week and that's easy because I can set aside the time to go do that. Some businesses have very limited hours and so it's nice if you're self-employed, you can just go kind of whenever, as long as you get all your work done too. And the last pro on my list is that you have unlimited vacation days, technically. 
Although for me, I'm rarely fully on vacation. So that's the con that goes along with that. But yeah, if I want to like go to Disneyland, I can do that. It's kind of sucks with my fiance. He has a certain number of vacation days and we're always trying to work around his vacation days. So sometimes I end up going places without him just because like he cannot get the time off and I'm going home to visit my family or something like that. We don't have to try to coordinate our time off from work. It's just like, okay, we'll go based off of what he can get. And then sometimes I go on additional trips on top of that. So that's really nice is not having to request time off work. You just do it. You just go and do it. But yeah, like I said, the downside to that is <laughs> when you're self-employed, no one's running the company when you're gone. It's up to you to get stuff done in advance. Like for example, I can get videos for my art channel done in advance, but then things like my daily vlogs, I film them daily, so I can't pre-film them. Although there have been times where I know I'm gonna be somewhere with no Wi-Fi, and I'll film a few bonus videos, just kind of like silly things to be like a placeholder, or I might just take the time off altogether. But usually when I travel, like most of the time, as long as I have a Wi-Fi connection, I will continue vlogging and editing and uploading. So it's like, I can take all the vacation time I want, but I'm still working a bit throughout that, which is kind of annoying when you travel especially because you think you're gonna have a lot of spare time to do that, but you don't. <laughs> especially things like Disney. My vlogs end up being three times the length they normally would be, so they take three times as long to edit, and I have like zero time because we're out until like late night, and I should go straight to bed, but I don't because I'm editing, and it's like... And usually hotel Wi-Fi sucks. <laughs> Sometimes you get good Wi-Fi, but usually not. But yeah, like I said, you gotta. I have to bring my work with me a little bit. I could choose not to though. I could choose to just take a full break. And then for the art videos, like I mentioned, I have to film them in advance. So that's a lot of work because I have to film a whole bunch of extra stuff in a shorter amount of time. Like maybe in a week, I normally would film one main art video and then all my other stuff. But instead I got to film like three videos a week. And so it can get pretty hectic leading up to the trip. So you can take all the time off you want, but you have to make up for the work at the same time. Let's look at more of these cons. Okay, here's one. Unless you hire people, you have to do everything yourself. <laughs> you have to run the business entirely by yourself. So that's handling emails, um, doing social media, because that's part of the job is doing social media posts, um, any advertising, accounting, website management. If you're selling stuff, you have to package and ship stuff yourself, unless you use a third-party service. Uh, you have to do your own tech support, your own customer service, all this kind of stuff. It falls on your lap. So you think, oh, I'm just going to do this one thing and that'll be the job. But there's all this stuff that you have to do behind the scenes too that really eats up a lot of your time. And so unless you're hiring people to handle those tasks for you, that all falls on you. This includes doing your taxes. Because <laughs> doing taxes is more complicated when you're self-employed. When you work someplace, you know, you get your little slip in the mail that says how much money you made, you submit that. Maybe you have a few other things to go with your taxes, but back in the day for me, it was just like that one slip, here you go, <laughs> taxes done. But now you have to keep track of all the stuff, man. I have to keep track of all my income from different sources. I mean, I just submit a final number in the end. I just like to break it down by source, like, Here's how much I made from YouTube this month. Here's how much I made from Amazon, from my online store, whatever. I have like a spreadsheet. Um, but you have to keep track of that, like all the income. And you have to keep receipts for anything you buy. That's a business related expense. But for certain things, you're only allowed to claim so much of it. And there's just like, there's just all these things. There's just all these things. And you have to like keep track of how much you use for internet and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. <laughs> It's just a lot of bookkeeping stuff that's really annoying and then I just give it all to my accountant. I'm like, here you go. <laughs> because, yeah, it's taxes are taxes are a thing. Oh, plus the other downside of taxes is that when you're self-employed, okay, when you work for a company and you get a paycheck, they've already deducted income taxes. But when you're self-employed, the income taxes haven't been taken off yet. It's up to you to set aside money for your taxes. And so you know, you might be like, yay, I made $100 off this painting. And it's like, cool, now subtract like another 20% for taxes because that's going to the government now. So <laughs> that can be really painful. So, yay. <laughs> this next one is sort of related to what I mentioned before, but a little different. I wrote, it's hard to separate work from the rest of your life, like your private life. It's, it's really hard to separate work 
and home when you work from home. <laughs> it's especially hard when you also view it as a hobby because to me it's like it's work and it's a hobby. So when I have free time, like this is what I want to be doing anyway. And so it's really hard to just not do anything. Like I'm, you know, I'll open up my emails at a weird hour of the night or I'm checking Twitter or checking comments and replying to comments and like things I shouldn't be doing late at night, but I do, or I just end up working on a video late into the night because I'm on a roll or maybe it's because I have to do it to hit a deadline. But sometimes it's just like, I get so creative at night and I'm just like, yay. But I try really hard to not work nights because like once my fiance is home from work, that's when I try to be done. But that doesn't always happen, especially if I'm in a crunch time like I am right now. <laughs> so yeah, separating work from your private life is hard and I still struggle with it, but meh. Okay, here's one that kind of goes along with the vacation time and how you can take as much vacation time as you want. No maternity leave <laughs> when you're self-employed. Like technically you can take all the maternity leave you want, but if you're just abandoning your business for months on end, it's gonna die. Your business is gonna die. So I, I think ahead to this all the time, like what am I gonna do when we start having kids? I wanna keep things going. I wanna have art videos pre-recorded. The daily vlogs, I obviously can't like film in advance, but I wanna keep daily vlogging throughout all this. And so really I'm gonna, there's no maternity leave. I'm just gonna have to, I'm just gonna have to keep working through everything. Kiki just fell off the windowsill and knocked down the screen that I took out of the window. Mommy, why? Anyway, next, <laughs> the next con is just dealing with negativity, criticisms, and hate online. I guess that refers back to the whole customer service thing. Cause again, it depends what you're doing for your business, but most businesses have an online component these days. And if it doesn't, then <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> so yeah, you, you know, you have to deal with any kind of negativity that might come your way, any criticisms of your business or whatever product it is that you're putting out there. And you know, you just have to have a thick skin, but that's one of the cons is just dealing that kind of thing and then the other con people telling you to get a real job or they're discouraging you from becoming self-employed in the first place like there's a lot of that especially in the YouTube community it's strange because there's a lot of people who want videos from you but then the second you make one complaint they're like oh get a real job like you're, you're not allowed to complain because you're a YouTuber go get a real job and it's just like and, and some people are like that with any self-employment job. They're like, oh, you're a freelance artist. Like, oh, you're self-employed or you're unemployed. <laughs> like some people take the word self-employed and they equate that to unemployed. And it's just so not true. Like it's so frustrating dealing with that kind of thing, but you have to try to push it aside. It's when it's coming from like family and friends where it gets kind of like, Ugh, cause they might try to discourage you from going this route. They're like, oh, you're going to be poor or that's not a real job and all this stuff like that. And so you have to deal with that when you're self-employed, but it's nice when you're succeeding and you can just shove it in their face and be like, ha ha, ha ha. <laughs> you know, just use it as motivation. Just pr tell yourself, you know what? I'm gonna prove you wrong. That's all you can really do. So that was pretty much it. It's my list of pros and cons. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm probably missing the odd little thing here, but I've been dwelling on this for the last day and a half and this is all I could really think of. So overall, I think it's, there's, the pros outweigh the cons, even though there are a lot of cons in there. I just, the freedom that comes along with it, nothing can replace that for me. And so, yay, hype. And thank you guys for giving me the ability to be self-employed in the first place. So yeah, thank you guys. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the painting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.